Back at the flax field, the blossom has now appeared. It is the 2nd of August, and although this blue blanket is a pretty sight, it will still be two or three weeks before harvesting. Good warm dry weather would now be essential so that the crop would ripen and remain standing. About the middle of the month, Sandy cuts the rushes, which will be left for a while. These will be made into bands for binding the bundles of flax. Sandy Moody gives a demonstration of making a rush band. harvest weather which Tom had hoped for did not come as the end of August again brought rain and wind. On the 1st of September the men decided to start pulling the flax. Unlike oats or barley, flax had to be pulled from the ground rather than cut as some of the valuable fibre was growing under the surface. The bundles of flax were tied. These were called beets and 12 beets made a stook. During the 50s People who pulled the flax were paid by how many stooks they had pulled. The rate of pay was about two shillings a stook, ten pence in today's money. Pulling flax was back-breaking work and most unpleasant during wet weather. However, there was never any shortage of workers as men and women would have done three or four hours pulling in the evenings. The extra money always came in useful as back to school time was not far away. The attraction of this unique event just outside the village of Garva was to Tom's advantage, for every evening a good crowd gathered, keen to show their skill at flax pulling. Men like 82-year-old David Gregg, who had travelled the 22 miles from Ballymena. Tom did not discourage anyone and said that he wouldn't mind paying the going rate of two shillings a stook for pulling. One big disadvantage was that the long, clear summer evenings had gone and it was now beginning to get dark at 7.30. But his biggest battle by far was still with the weather, and many evenings no flax at all was pulled. More help was to come in the form of this 1940 flax pulling machine, the property of Willie Anderson from Clock Mills. The flax was pushed into a V-shape by means of the dividers, and the belts pulled it from the ground. More belts and wheels transported it along the platform where the men lifted it off in beats. Five or six men were needed to operate the puller. One driving the tractor, two on the machine, one lifting off the beats, and usually two men coming behind tying. The machine had its own petrol-driven engine, and in good weather conditions, with the flax dry and standing upright, could have pulled the equivalent of eight men. However, conditions here were anything but good, and many stops had to be made when wet flax jammed in the belts. Progress was slow. With half of the field pulled and stooked, Tom decided to fill one of the two lint dams. Bertie Stratton had brought along this 1947 TVO Fordson Major for the task of transporting the flax to the dam about one mile away. The man forking up the beets is George Porter. The smaller of the two dams close to Tom's home will hold about four loads of flax. The 
first load is on its way to the dam, and you can judge that it is quite heavy by the way Bertie's Fordson is steaming. This dam was last in use about 33 years ago and needed quite a bit of work to restore it to its former glory. The dam had been filled with water from a small stream which ran about 20 yards away. With the weather we'd been having, Tom had no problem finding enough water. The flax is forked into the dam heads down. This process is called retting and would normally take 10 to 14 days in warm weather conditions. However, it is now mid-September and the days and nights are getting colder. Retting causes the outer wood to rot away, as we will see later, and leaves the flax fibre ready for the various other processes through which it has to go. The men worked late that night and got the four loads into the dam. The flax had to be totally submerged in the water and in order to achieve this, weights would have to be put on top. Stones were used for this purpose and Tom was lucky enough that this old stone ditch was nearby. Stones about as heavy as a man could lift were ideal. Were this not done, the flax would begin to float after a few days, which would mean that it wouldn't ret properly. The men spend about an hour and a half stoning the dam. It was as well that you didn't mind getting wet feet at this job. <laughs> Tom's two sons now tramp down the flax, again ensuring total immersion. This dam will have to be tramped morning and evening every day for the next two weeks. In days gone by, running over the stones on a lint dam was a favourite pastime for the young people. The risk of getting wet, especially if you were wearing your school shoes, added to the excitement. Tom is glad to have half of his flax crop safely in the dam, however the other half is still growing in the field. <laughs> 